Good day, everybody. It's Uncle D coming to you on another beautiful afternoon here. Um, I have to, uh, I, I'm doing this, uh, I, and I hope I can get all of this out quickly. I'm a little uh, anxious to get it out. Uh, I, 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 I had trouble sleeping last night and ended up, you know, getting up a little bit earlier to come start my morning workout because yesterday a friend of mine on social media posted something and I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what it was. What the person posted, um, they didn't want the word CIS, C-I-S, to be used in front when referring to them. And I, 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 of course, I'm gonna refer to you the way that you prefer to be referred to. So I asked the question, what is so offensive? At first I looked it up. I, I looked up cis and what it says is a person whose uh, gender expression is the same as what was observed when they were born, obviously. So if your parents observed that you happen to be male when you were born and you express yourself what society in a way that society considers male now, then you are a cisgendered male which to me just sounded accurate. I, I, I couldn't understand why. And it wasn't the first time, which is what made me stop and ask the question. I had heard other friends of mine, you know, say the same thing. I'm, I'm not, you know, a cis woman. I'm just a woman. I'm not a, you know, well, I've only heard women say that, honestly. And let me say this, this is all from my perspective. This is all within my paradigm and my experience. And because I live in an inner city, a lot of the people that I come in contact with are women of color. So um, obviously my friends, I mean, most of my friends are uh, women of color. And so that's the perspective that I have. So, you know, I asked the person on social media on the post that they posted and they, their response was, it's nothing offensive intrinsically in the word cis, C-I-S, cis. Um, they just don't like it because they're just a woman and that should all only be that should be the term used to describe them simply it should not it should not have a prefix so then i went to look up the etymology of cis because now i'm confused i'm like okay well maybe it has a connotation that i don't understand so i looked it up and it said that it was in it was uh coined brought into use by scientists in 1994 as a way of expressing the definition because there were as a way of dealing with the amount of gender expressions that we uh, now observe in society because people are there the trans visit there's more trans visibility I'm, I'm not saying that there's more trans people because what we don't under and i've heard people say oh there's more now and you know they trying to take over that none of that is true it's probably the same amount uh, percentage wise of the population that it always has been the thing is we are tuned in and plugged in all day we always have a phone in our hand and when we don't have a phone we're looking at a television or a computer or a laptop or a tablet or something we're always tuned into something so we're always hearing about it more because we have more ways for us to receive information. So we're constantly receiving information because people are being people. Everybody's being themselves. I see more straight people uh, talking on podcasts, more uh, men of color, more women of color doing podcasts, and they all hate each other. Uh, oftentimes, that's the arguments, those are the conversations that they have about all the difficulty. No, I don't hear a lot of talk about, you know, the best parts of being in a relationship between two people of color on any of the podcast because that doesn't sell. That doesn't make people want to watch. It's not dramatic. And I get that. So, um, and separately, once I, I, you know, asked the question on social media on the person's post that had uh, brought up the subject, I then asked a friend of mine in a in a private message. I then, you know, 
DM'd her in a, in a private message because this was a friend of mine who had expressed the same thing. So I said, let me find out right now what exactly this is because I don't understand why it is uh, so offensive. Um, please forgive that noise. I'm trying to make this, take this wrapper down. Um, so me and my friend got into the longest conversation in private message about why she does not uh, want to be referred to as a cisgendered woman. Uh, she said the same thing. I am a woman. That is what I have always been. Uh, my friend said she's earned the right to be a woman. And, and I'm laughing because I, I just have a different train of thought. Um, I didn't earn the right to be a man or any of that. That comes with age in our society. People refer to you as a man after you receive a, after you reach a certain age. That's a, an achievement, unless we're calling staying alive an achievement. In that case, okay, fine, I see that. Um, being an adult, being a, a responsible adult, is an achievement to me. It, 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 it's not something that you come by by accident or just by staying alive. So yeah, I, I kind of had issue with that. And I'm, I brought that up, but we agree to disagree because we're friends and we could do that. And that's the other reason why I did it through text, because it's an emotionally charged uh, topic of conversation. So I think it, I can remove myself instead of doing it voice to voice or face to face, uh, do it message to message to me is a little bit easier and I can get more information. Everybody can only answer, you know, once you've read, you know, what the other person has posted, because that's how we communicate. So needless to say, my friend and I completely disagreed. At the end of the day, I'm gonna call you exactly what it is you prefer to be called. Just like she said, she said, I'm gonna call you what you just, what you asked to be called. If it's in they or them or whatever, that's what she was alluding to. So I, I, I still felt like I didn't understand where the offense came, where it's coming from. Um, this morning when I got up on the post again, uh, another person who I don't know had responded and said basically the same thing. Everybody's reading really, really the same thing. That's I, I didn't agree to be called that. Um, so that's not what I want to be called. Okay. But nobody has told me what it is that uh, the offense is. If I can take a guess, I do, I, I have heard video clips or uh, parts of a podcast or whatever where there were trans women and the amount of uh, emotion that they put behind use, using the word cis when they're referring to uh, natural born women, <laughs> which to me is a weird thing to say. I would rather say cis women than natural born women. Like I don't, because I don't know what that is. I don't know what a natural born, I know what a natural born female is. I don't know what a natural born woman is. So I guess that, and, and here's the other thing, and I said this to my friend in, conver in the uh, text conversation, in the uh, private message conversation that we were having, I said, it's, it's, language is evolving. The fact that, you know, gender, we're coming to understand gender in a different way. And if you watched my last podcast, I had a clip from a woman who is a female gynecologist to explain that sometimes there are people whose phenotype is female, but they may be a person who's cro who chromosomally is X and Y, is, is a male chromosomally. They can't reproduce. They have female, they look like a female physically, but they have an X and Y chromosome. Uh, uh, transversely, there's also people who look physically like a man but have uh, double X chromosomes. So we're coming to understand gender in a different way the more we just accept what there actually is here in nature. This isn't something new. It's not something that has just arrived. It's just something that we have more information about more quickly. We're being inundated with it, yes, depending on what it is you like to watch when you are on social media or on the computer or whatever, depending on what you look at and you know what conversations you like to follow. Yeah, you're gonna hear it a whole lot more and people are going to use the term because it's identifying when you understand and accept the fact that there is more than one type of what we call female. There are uh, fe 
female. There are people who are male to female transgender. There are people who are female to male transgender. Each one of those contains a female part in it. And there are what we call natural born women who were born female with the X, uh, X chromosome. Then we have the people who were born with the female phenotype who are X and Y chromosome. Then we have people who are female because they're X and X chromosome, but they have the male phenotype. So there are a whole bunch of different types of gender for us to consider. And as long as we are not willfully disregarding information, which is something like racist people do and bigots, you know, they just don't want to intake in new information. And that's what this sounds like to me. And I really don't like to think that my friends are that afraid to take in new information, but it just seemed like that's what it was. And what I said to the second woman who had uh, questioned me on the post, she asked, she said, you know, this, she had reiterated the same thing. I'm a woman. I should, da, 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 da. And <laughs> my thing is, where are you encountering this so much that it is a problem? that it needs to be said that this is not what you choose to be referred at. Like, are people walking up to you in the street and saying, hey, cisgender woman, can I ask you a question? Like, who's doing that? Who is always, like, is, is it, because to me, I only hear it online. I only hear it when I am watching something on either social media or, you know, something like that. I, I don't watch the news, so I don't, I, I don't hear it there, but on social media, the platforms that I follow for information purposes, I do hear that term. I do hear cisgender. And so I'm trying to figure out, are y'all, are y'all <laughs> being offended by something online? Is, is, is that what it is? Y'all are being offended by this term online. And now you're going, I, I, you can't refer to me as that. I refuse to be referred to as that. But here's the thing. And this is the other thing that's going to happen because there is a community of people for whom that is a useful term. So within that community, that term is going to stay. We haven't gotten rid of the word nigger. What makes you think that we are going to get rid of this term? And nigger is an actual offensive term. It's actually offensive. It's actually used to denigrate people. It is actually used to subjugate people. It is actually used in society as part of the patriarchy, as part of the whole capital, yada, 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 yada. It is part of all that. It is part of our history as that. This is a word that was coined in 1994. It doesn't have the historical perspective of that. So I'm trying to figure out why it is, and this is the overall to, to get to the point of uh, what I want to talk about is the bait and switch that we have all fallen for because it made me post all of this conversation. What I, what I ended up doing was putting it because I'm an asshole sometimes and I, I always poke the bear. And when I don't understand something, me not understanding something is the most frustrating thing ever because I try to learn. I try to understand. I want to understand. I want to get your perspective. I want to hear what it is from your perspective that makes it that way. And because I'm hearing it from so many people, it's got to be a reasonable, it's got to be a reasonable thing. It's got to be a reasonable reason why everybody is offended or many women rather are offended by this term. So I posted because I, I, I think that the two communities should be allied. I don't see how you can divide these two things. Well, I do see obviously the divisions, but let me get to that in a second. So my post was cisgendered women and trans women have the same enemies and it's not each other. And one woman whom I love, <laughs> because she never fails to put her perspective regardless of whatever, if we disagree, we disagree, I love that because we can agree to disagree, we can we can have different perspectives. But I also think I, I like to have the conversation because again, I want to understand. So she said she's heard a lot of trans women use the term pejoratively, I guess, um, in a way. And I think that is what most women, even the other women hadn't said out loud is that they've come across situations where it's being used in a way where it's denigrating. I get that. Now that I get, very few people said that, but that I, 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 I do understand um, if people are using it that way. Allowing it to be used that way is a different thing. <laughs> like you can say it that way, but am I gonna take it that way? We keep falling for this bait and switch where as opposed to looking at the real enemy, we're looking at each other. 
trans women, natural born women, any type of female, any type of female person, uh, usually crimes perpetrated against those people are done by the same type of human, males. Usually cisgendered males. Males that were born men, that were born male and identify as male now are usually the enemy of both of those communities. The Supreme Court, whose makeup is not 50% women, uh, is turning back the clock on not only women, people of color, there's so many issues to address. There's so much for us to, to fight right now. And this is where people want to pick up arms over a three letter word that simply means what it means. It is not taken out of context in that way or anything. So again, like I said, at the end of the day, I will call you whatever it is you desire to be called, probably by your name, which is my preferred way to call people. I don't call people by their gender ever. This cisgender, I, if I'm describing a situation where there's more than one type of gender, uh, that's I'm going to use the words that best describe each trans women and cisgendered women <coughs> excuse me describe two different type of women how we keep falling for this bait and switch i i i don't know we we fall for it often though we fall for it in a lot of different narratives in society we just fall for that narrative um, one of the biggest narratives, the bait and switch narratives that I find that we have fallen for is the fact that men, first of all, that God is referred to as male. Weird. Um, that men are protectors, men are providers. Uh, that, that, that is so rarely the case in nature. And it is not even the human condition for men to be providers. And if you've seen my other videos, we talked about this before. Men are not natural providers. Men only pr protect what's theirs. Men don't protect community unless they are taught or made to protect community. Women are natural protectors. Women are natural providers. Women protect with their bodies, us from birth, from conception rather, not from birth, but from conception. They protect us in their bodies. They feed us with their bodies. That is community at its closest. That is where men learn community. Women have natural community. I don't know how it is we keep falling for narratives. If there is a being that brings life onto this planet, it is females. That is the only thing we have witnessed bring life to this planet. And actually, um, <laughs> everywhere that you look in government and everything, it is usually a cisgendered white male or a group of them or a group that looks mostly like them making decisions for these female bodies so I my 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 what I'm attempting I'm hoping to get people to understand if nothing else is your fight isn't with the people that you think it is that's what I'm, I'm hoping to get across and I know I haven't done the best job <laughs> I don't I don't do the best job sometimes because I do it kind of antagonistically I, I, I get that I do but it's just a forced thought I, I'm just trying to get people to think. We don't do enough thinking. We do more remembering and regurgitating than we do thinking. And we can actually use our own thoughts. Um, I heard, I hear oftentimes actually, when we talk about uh, things that are passed down from generation to generation recently, not recently, but more so recently, um, we've come to understand that even trauma is passed down uh, genetically, um, but not in the way that you, not always in the way that we're 
led to believe. If someone in your family has diabetes or cancer or hypertension, your doctor, most doctors will oftentimes tell you, you have a high risk for um, those same uh, maladies. You have a high risk for cancer or high blood pressure or diabetes if someone in your family does. But what's not iterated enough is it's not genetically passed down to you that you should get it. What it is is your habits, your information, the type of food you eat, the way you handle stress, the way you retain information, the way that you deal with your feelings. All of these things are the things that are really, really passed down. And those are the things that are going to cause you the cancer, the diabetes, the hypertension and things of that nature. Those are the things that we're not monitoring and changing from the generation before. You have to pivot. We have to make adjustments. We always talk about uh, the next generation doing better than the one before it. We have to allow them. We have to allow them to do things differently than we have done them. We have to allow them to go out and make new mistakes than we made. We have to not make them afraid to go out into this world and find and do and build and grow and seek. We put too much fear. We listen to too much fear. We're enculturated in fear. It's very difficult enough for women to navigate this society with the amount of fear that is placed on you. And I'm not saying that danger isn't real. What I'm saying is more often than not, the danger, the anxiety that you experience has to do with what you are led to believe more so than what you're going to counter in your everyday experiences. We have to get rid of these ideas and do better. We have to take in more information. But I, I this thought occurred to me recently. Um, I, I, when growing up, I grew up in a, a, a Baptist Christian church. My family grew up in this particular church. Um, we were always taught to pray. This is just my experience. We were always taught to pray. We were always taught about praying. We prayed in church um, and different things like that. What we were not taught in this particular church, again, this is my experience, what we were not taught, what was not um, what we weren't given was we weren't taught meditation. And as you get older, as I got older, I came to understand that prayer is you talking to your personal God and meditation is you listening for the answers to that. So it was always talk but never listening. And that showed in the people who I was around. There was always talk, very little listening. We were always, there was always people talking at each other, about each other, but never getting to the heart of the matter, never getting to the fear of the matter. Because underlying all these bad decisions that we make is some form of fear that we haven't addressed. It is some form of fear. You can call it and dress it up in any type of label you want. At the end of the day, it is fear. It is fear and misinformation. Those are the two things that misguide us the most. Um, so all these uh, feelings of, of fear, <laughs> which brought me to, I'm trying to check my notes. Uh, when people have you went, no. I start that wrong. When we're taught fear, at the, at the level that we're taught fear, it keeps us sick. We're constantly in worry. We're constantly in depression. We're constantly in anxiety. We are constantly looking for the next worst thing to happen. We are taught that if a situation, when we and when contemplating a situation, we're supposed to try to think of every possible scenario that could go wrong so that we can preempt those scenarios. We don't have the capability mentally to do that. We don't have the capability to thresh out every scenario and see which way it's going to come. That is not what our brains are for. Um, but that's a whole other uh, conversation. We were never taught to sit still and understand. Sit still and listen for the answer. It's always taught. And that's been my personal experience. It, it, it was just a lot of talk. More talk, less listening. 
And that is how a whole bunch of misinformation and hurt feelings and things of that nature. And when you carry that around, the, the human body is not meant to be in an emergency response situation, a state rather, all the time. And there are a lot of people who are walking around like that, constantly in a state of stress, constantly anticipating something bad happening, constantly trying to figure out what they can do to preempt something bad from happening. Everything is a preemptive strike against some sort of fear that they have imagined that hasn't really even happened. They've never even experienced it, but somebody told them it could happen. So they have to prepare themselves with this fear and they just run loose. Your body breaks down. There's actually a hormone that when you, it's a stress hormone, it begins with the cortisol, I believe it's called. That's all this, all the, uh, the, the, the spare tire around your midsection. When you are high stress, that chemical uh, sits in your, uh, creates a whole fat pocket. That's where your fupa comes from and your gut and all the rest of that. That's where that comes from, that stress, cord, that stress hormone, cortisol. When you produce that amount all the time, when you're constantly worried, when you're constantly under fire, when you're constantly worried about the job, when you're constantly worried about the kids, when you're constantly worried about the uh, significant other, when you're constantly worried about your parents, when you're constantly worried about your friends, when you're constantly worried and constantly worried and constantly worried and constantly worried and constantly worried, yeah. And then comes the diabetes and then comes the high blood pressure after all this is sitting in your system. And the other thing is we don't eat well. We're not taught to eat well. The things that we were raised on oftentimes are the things that are killing us the fastest. But again, that is a whole other conversation. I have to do some, I have to get better information to bring that to you in a better way. So um, once they have you in this praying situation of asking all the time at church and praying and asking and praying and asking and praying, you are then enculturated into the group thing. If the church, if it isn't sanctioned by the church, forget it and there are many people who walk around like that now let me say this and I've had difficulty in my own personal life when it comes to this type of topic because we again and I say this all the time in our society and even in the communities of color we are not taught to deal with the world with a reasonable foundation of truth if you are if you were brought up in any religion you were taught a whole bunch of fairy tales and lies you were taught a whole bunch of superficial things that can't be reproduced you can't experience them today you none of the people who the uh, the main characters of, of excuse me the main characters of these stories you often can't even find that they existed there's really no proof other than maybe one book Other than that, you have no proof. There's no proof other than that that the persons, the people even existed. So you are enculturated into the group thing. The group thing gives you a whole bunch of things to believe that don't exist in nature, never have. You can't reproduce it in any shape, form, or fashion. So that gives you the superficial belief that it had to come from a higher power when you still have no, no reasonable expectation in this way. This higher power has not shown itself to you in any shape, form, or fashion at one time in your life in any way that is discernible from anything other than coincidence. So that being said, again, in our community, we do not have a reasonable foundation of truth. So you go to church, they don't talk to you about mm, how to, <laughs> they don't talk to you about how to do the stock market. They don't talk to you about the atrocities that happen and how we're going to prevent them by providing, uh, by creating our own personal wealth in our community. No, we're taught these fairy tales for some reason. And I don't get the, like the educational system and the, the church, the church, the religious systems are just as worse. We talk about the educational system in this country and we know that it is a bunch of lies and we see what is happening in places like Florida where when you try to teach the truth, the actual truth, people get upset. But when you take that to religion and you try to teach the actual truth, again, people get upset. So what I was trying, the point that I was trying to make again, I said in my own personal life, I've had experiences where I have disassociated myself from people because of their beliefs how does that affect how do their beliefs affect me um 
if you believe that people who are gay should be put to death, that and you can you can dress it up how you want. You can say a lake of fire, burning hell. You can you can you believe that we should be punished for something that we had no control over. I'm not gonna argue that anymore. That's for you to work out. It comes with education. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, there's a young man on TikTok. He was it? Education is elevation. He always says that, and, and it's the truth. There's some points I'm not gonna argue him anymore. I'm 50 years old. Anybody who is in my age range has had that amount of time to find out if it was within your paradigm and worthy of your attention. You could have gone to find out exactly what it was about that that made people do that, that thing, that one thing that you do not understand. That thing that you think is disgusting or whatever, because I think straight sex is disgusting. I, ooh, okay, ooh. Anyway, that thing that you think is deplorable, that thing that has been drummed into you over time by other people, because if you experienced it, you would you, you haven't experienced it for yourself in any shape, form, or fashion to make a judgment on it. And I'll say that. How do you make a judgment on something you haven't experienced because somebody told you to? And that's the thing. That's how they like us. They like us in a state of waiting to be told what to think. And that's what we fall for. Day in, day out. And I have problems talking about these type of topics, particularly because I know that much of my resistance is gonna come from a bunch of people who are uninformed. It's gonna come from a bunch of people who haven't done any research. It's gonna come from a bunch of people who all they got is their Bible in their hand or what, you know, such and such and told them, or I just know, or some ignorant shit like that. Like, it's not gonna come from a place of education. It's not gonna come from a place of research. It's not gonna come from a place of love and understanding, obviously. It's not gonna come from any of that. It's gonna come from you vehement, vehemently denying and trying to eradicate something that you have no control over for one. And if you believe that God is a God that makes some mistakes and everything is here for a purpose, you might hate it. You might hate it. It could be serial killers. I can't see everything. See, here's the thing that I encounter. Again, a lot of my friends are female. So often I'm in, in the company of females of color. And <laughs> one thing I noticed. Now, I don't have many male friends to compare this to. But the male friends that I do have, who I have driven with, oftentimes either they tell me, you can turn off the GPS if we're going somewhere and we need directions. If they know, they tell me, you can turn off the GPS. A woman will let me put, my, my friends, let me be real specific, will let me put on a GPS and then tell me every place that they think the GPS is wrong. And people in my family do this too. I've experienced this with my own mother. We had the GPS on and she is gonna tell, well, why didn't you go that way? I think it would have been, Listen, there's a satellite, right, that sits in space, right, that has a camera that looks down on the earth. And it can see traffic. It can see traffic like I can't see. Like, I can just see up the street. It can see up the street, around the corner, and down the road. So I'm going to let it guide me because that's what I have it for, right? burns them up they it, they just do not under well what you it, it's always a conversation about what the gps is doing listen and, and i'm a person who sometimes isn't even paying attention to the gps i have a wonderful time when i'm driving like i am spaced out i am like it's very very meditative for me when i'm driving so sometimes i even miss the directions on the gps i don't even care i'm one time i anyway so <laughs> watching them from the perspective of knowing that the GPS has the best position to guide me. It's a global positioning satellite. <laughs> How are you gonna know better than the global positioning satellite? Now, granted, there's some things you do though, like around your own area. I know it's easier to dip this way. I know it's taking me in a straight line because that's the shortest way. But I know that if I go this way, there's less lights and I can probably beat the traffic. I know certain places like that, but if we don't know where we're going, we're going to let the thing that has the most vision guide us. That's what we have it for. So the group think has never worked for me. In fact, 
for those of you who know me personally, you know, um, like I said, I was raised Christian and then I converted to Islam and now I don't practice anything um, simply because I've gotten more information. And the more information I receive, the better I understand as much as I possibly can. And it's, it's not like I'm trying to get to know everything. I'm just trying to get to some peace, truly. And fighting everything around me, being in juxtaposition to the world around me is not how I want to live. And that is what I find with a lot of the people that I see around me. You're in juxtaposition. Like I started off one of the messages to my friend when we were messaging last night. I said, you all like to be offended. Like this is nothing to be offended over. It's not something that's happening to you so much so that it is, it's not trans people oppressing you. You're not oppressed by trans people like in this way. You know what I'm saying? Like this is just a word. And I do get like trans people, not just the whole LGBT community. We have our own words that we say for straight people. We do. Y'all have y'all words that we say for us. None of them are nice. However, <laughs> In this particular instance, like I said, I don't see the offense, but again, I will call you or refer to you in the way that you choose to be referred to, again, probably by your name. I just don't see picking up the uh, picking up arms for this particular uh, thing. We, we, we fall in, I just feel like it's a bait and switch. I feel like if women of all types just stood together, you could get so much more done. I just feel like it would just be so much more effective. Everybody I get isn't easy to work with. I get that. Every community isn't e easy to work with in that there are always individuals within the community who are gonna go extreme in every community. But see, that's the other thing that I was talking to my friend about last night because she said, well, I would like to be referred to, you know, when she was talking about that. And what I said was, you know, to me, black women are not um, women in general. Not just black women, but women in general are not monolithic. So having more words to describe the different types of women to me is just a bonus. It tells me that there are different varieties and, and, and teaches me to respect all of them when I have the specific names for this type of woman and this type of woman and this type of woman and this type of woman. What you, this describes this and this describes this. We're gonna have more vocabulary about this as the world turns. We're gonna have more vocabulary about this. You insisting that you don't like the term simply because of the way that people use it. Not that it's uh, in and of itself an uh, inoffensive term. I don't know how that's gonna stick. Because again, there's so many different ways to express gender now. Not now, we're coming to understand the many ways that there are to express gender. Can you imagine years ago before all this technology, a woman gets married, but she has X and Y chromosomes. So she's trying to get pregnant, her and her husband want to have a family and she can't get pregnant at all. There's no way in hell she's ever going to get pregnant. She's never going to conceive. So now what type of woman is that? What type of woman is that? I would love for some, what type, what type of woman is that? For somebody who has both genitalia, however, the male parts of the genitalia are mostly dysfunctional. What do you call that? Intersex, right? But if they express as a woman, then what do you call her? I'm looking for answers. There, I, I, and you all may not like it again, but the world is, we're getting more perspective. We're getting more nuance of the world. We're, be, we're being, the picture is, is, we're being pushed closer to the picture so that we can see all the dots. We can see all the dots. We can name each dot. We are, we know what these things are now. It is no longer denial about it. So, um, you know, I, I pick your battles is the thing to take away. If there's anything that can be taken away from this is, is pick your battles. The, I, I don't think this is a hill anybody wants to die on. This three letter word that simply says you identify with the same, same sex that people observed at your birth. I don't know how that's defensive. 
I'm trying to figure out, like I'm really trying to see the offense of that because I am a cisgendered male. I express what society sees as uh, a male persona and that was what is was expressed at my uh, birth, that was observed rather at my birth, and that was what was put on my birth certificate that I am male. So, I would love to understand how that does harm. I really would. I would love to understand how we intend to move forward in conversations about gender without acknowledging that there are these nuances. And also, if this isn't happening to you anywhere except online, why do you care? Why is this bandwagon even, you know, being pushed? Where is this happening so much so that it's an issue? Is it mostly online? Where are these conversations taking place? Unless you're in a workplace where gender is a factor and something that is discussed often, okay, I can see you kind of being pissed in that way. But for the average person, the average woman, where's this happening? So much so that it's an issue, except online. And if we don't recognize the fact that we're being mad at something that is all <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we can, that energy, it can be better spent. It really can. It, it really, really can. That energy can be used to heal communities. That energy can be used to change lives. That energy can be used so much more efficiently. There's so many other issues to be addressed. There's so many more issues to be addressed. So, um, it feels like sometimes that you guys just hate trans women. And sometimes it feels like trans women just hate natural born women. And again, from both communities, I'm trying to figure out why. I've seen um, over the years, you know, the comments that trans women make about straight love, natural born women. I've seen natural born women turn up their noses at trans women. And I don't know why. Neither one of you can be the other. So there's no competition in there. I don't know. I don't know. And it's not the, the here's the thing. Answer. It is not Uncle D. It is not your damn fight. <laughs> it's not my fight. I'm curious from a social perspective, like I'm always wondering. It's it's always curious to me the things that we decide to get behind and put our put our energy behind in life. And when I see people of a right when it's one person yeah that's what, what that person chooses two people eh, there's a couple of people who don't like that when it's three or four people you're like wait a minute there's a whole there's obviously a movement here if this is just the part of the segment the population that i'm experiencing and it's this many people i can't imagine what it is anywhere else and i'm trying to figure out what is the what is it why do y'all hate it why do you what what is the problem with each other I don't know. But I hope y'all figure out that the real enemy is <laughs> sitting in the Senate and the House and places like that. That's the real enemy. Those are the people who are passing laws that affect both of you currently and popularly. Those are the people who both of you should have your guns aimed at, your figurative guns, not literal guns. Your figurative guns should be aimed at those people. If there's anybody you should be gunning for, it is them. Those are the people who are actually who actually have the power to change your life. Those are the people whose decisions affect your decisions, not the people who are using this three letter word. Those are the people you have the least to worry about, because even if it comes down to people being and I hope this isn't the case, but people thinking that they're going to have to share it from the pool of men or whatever. Listen, if there's a man who likes men or likes uh, 
not men, I'm so sorry. If there is a man who likes somebody who is trans in any form, female to male or male to female, a natural born woman ain't gonna do it. And neither will a natural born man. There's so much that you haven't been exposed to. And what I would encourage each of you to do, if there is a problem that you have, find a trans person in your community that you can talk to. Ask them some questions about their life and share with them some things about yours from your perspective. And then come back and tell me. I am curious to know what it is you found out. Maybe I should put a pound together. Hmm. We'll see. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here now. Um, I hope you all uh, <laughs> don't hate me. <laughs> Any of you, if you do, listen. I don't have any control over that. I'm trying to make sure that... Um, oh, this was one thing that I forgot to mention. I have to get this in here, so we're not going nowhere yet. Uh, a few days ago, I forget where this was. A man was murdered for voguing. I think it was somewhere in a public place, a train station or something. He was voguing. And a Muslim man, it is uh, allegedly, a Muslim man uh, took offense and with the help of some people, I think, uh, took this man's life. How? <laughs> I, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because I do not understand again this is for whoever that man is and the people who agree with his actions because there are people who agree with his actions. Uh, why does it offend you so much? I'm still waiting for somebody to come and tell me that. Why does it offend you so much? What does it have to do with you? See, the la one of the last things my friend said to me last night, she said, at the end of the day, it doesn't have anything to do with me as long as I'm addressed the way that I want to be addressed. I agree wholeheartedly on the part um, where it has nothing to do with you. Um, why do you think you have agency over somebody else's life like that? That's the other thing that comes to religion. You thinking you have agency over somebody else's life because of what that book says. There's not too much I'm going to say about that. I brought that up again because no. Let me mention this first, too. There's also, within the last week or two, a black woman who, whose life was taken because a white man thought she was a trans woman. Because a white man thought this black woman who was a natural, which I call a natural born female or a cis woman, because he thought she was a transgender woman. He thought he should take her life. So the people in my life who I've come across who think that it is okay for me to, or think that I'm going to burn in a, a lake of fire or some bullshit like that. First of all, I'm not. Second, you can continue with your fairy tale. Um, I, at the end of the day, to me, that feels like you wishing me dead. It feels like you wishing me harm. It, it feels like you um, believe me that's what should happen to me. So if you believe that's what should happen to me, I believe I shouldn't be near you. Because ultimately that, that thinking leads to those two situations where that young man was killed for voguing and where this woman was killed because somebody thought she was a transgender woman. See, y'all forget that there are women also who you could be a double X chromosome woman and still have manly features. You might look like your daddy. And this man thought it was okay to take her life. See, but y'all are fighting each other. But y'all are fighting each other. Y'all are drawing the line in the sand with this word. When there's people who don't give a fuck about that, they don't give a fuck about your life. They don't give a fuck about the lives of trans women, of cisgender women. They don't give a fuck about any of that. None. They don't give a fuck about any of that. They don't give a fuck about any of that. 
So, you know, I'm hoping that you'll take your guns and stop pointing them at each other and point them at the real people. Point them at the people you need to focus on. That is my takeaway. If there's anything that, and I know, I don't, I, my problem is I have trouble, you know, doing it the, straight away. I wish I would take this camera. This guy is having the time of his life. He is doing the stolen car in the parking lot with his headphones on and his backpack. He looks special, but um, yeah, point your guns in the right direction. If you actually want some change, that is where you point your guns. Those are the people who made the decision to bring that word into you. Scientists brought it out. They started using it. Politicians started using it. And the community started using it at large. That is where it derived from. So point your guns in the right direction if you actually want change. If, you, if you're not just shooting off your mouth because you know you need something to be mad at this week, then go ahead and shoot your gun in the right direction. Point it at the people who can make some real change, the people who are taking away your rights, the people who are taking away your ability to make decisions about your own body, the people who are taking away your abilities to appear in public. Take your guns figuratively and point them at them. And I think that's, I'm all, after that, um, let me check the book just to make sure. <laughs> I wanna leave you, yeah, I'm gonna leave you with this final note and I'm about to get out of here. Um, and I think I mentioned this in one of the last two podcasts, one of the last two episodes I did. There is not a straight kid in the world that has to come out to their parents. Pause and think about that for a minute. Straight kids don't have to come out to their parents. There's no agony over your parents finding out that you like the opposite gender. None. Doesn't happen. Straight uh, gay kids, on the other hand, that is always something. Everybody has their coming out story. That's something that you you bond with with friends and oh, when you're dating. It's something you talk about then, and you know different things like that. Because sometimes it's very traumatic. You all don't have to have coming out stories. We have to have extra explanations to differentiate the variety in our community. Using the word cis is just one of the ways that we use to express the variety in the community. If it's used with vitriol by certain people, you can use any word with vitriol. But throw it, you know, crop making a line in the sand over this word, I just think it's a, a, a misuse of energy. So I hope you got something out of it. I hope you like the this, uh, this episode, I hope you have some conversation for me. I hope that there's something, that, a response that you want to uh, give in, re in relation to what I just talked about. So, as always, you can inbox me right here on YouTube or you can email me at imrealdevious at gmail.com. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you soon with another conversation about how we're going to get this shit together. If you do not know something, if you realize you do not know something, because most people do not realize that they do not know, <laughs> if you realize that you do not know, it's very natural for your intelligence to seek to know. It doesn't need a guru, it doesn't need a scripture, it doesn't need somebody to introduce that to you. It is in the nature of your intelligence that you wish to know. So this longing to know, when it finds a very intense expression in the form of seeking, we call this spiritual process. Or in other words, the basis of spirituality is a realization that I do not know. But the moment you say, I'm religious, you refer to yourself as a believer. When you say you're a believer, what you're saying is, everything that I do not know, I will make it up. You kind of make a compromise in your life that instead of truth, you settle for an authority as the truth. Spiritual process means truth is the only authority for you. Authority is never the truth for you.